This video is extremely important, so I hope you stay until the end to have a better understanding about the situation. Although I'm addressing this whole video over the whole Purito controversy, I don't think that this issue alone is just about one sunscreen, but I think it branches off to so many aspects relating to the situation, like if we can even trust sunscreens as a whole. Hey guys, it's Elena and welcome back to my channel. If you clicked on this video, you probably have a good idea of what's even going on right now what's going on in the world but what specifically is going on in the skincare community something huge has happened so you probably have a good idea of what's going on if you don't and you're completely lost then I am here to shed light on the situation and hopefully answer some of your really really important questions so this is Purito a fairly new Korean skincare brand launched in 2017 this brand's popularity has skyrocketed the past two years because of their really close Close collaborations with a lot of influencers, the really tight relationship with their community, and their noble values like donating a portion of their profit to Best Friends Animal Society. Like, how cute is that? <laughs> Purito is actually really well known for having such a really good community because they just seem to really listen to our feedback to the point where we asked as consumers if they can make a fragrance-free version of their skincare line. They actually even made that. That's so cool. <laughs> They're known to have really popularized the ingredient Centella Asiatica, which is basically 2020's It Girl ingredient. It's an antioxidant herb that helps the skin heal its wounds. It contains anti-aging and anti-irritation properties so it's overall a really really popular ingredient this year but what the brand is really really known for is the Purito Centella Green Level SPF 50 everyone including myself raved about this product this sunscreen is really hydrating it gives no white cast meaning there's like no white film or white mask that it leaves on your face plus on october this year they actually posted a video on their youtube they claim that this spf is actually 84.5 even though it's marketed as SPF 50 on the bottle so basically it's the perfect sunscreen right or so it seems was that corny? That was a little corny. <laughs> so when the SPF took off, the founder of INCI Decoder, which is basically a website that just helps you break down ingredients and basically help you decode beauty products, educating us one ingredient at a time. She began to question if this product actually lived up to its claims of being an SPF of 50. When the Purito SPF is only made up with two non-FDA approved UV filters at very, very low concentrations. These are 3% Uvenol A and 2% Uvenol T. This SPF is a Korean brand, so these filters are actually approved by the KFDA. Just because these aren't approved by the FDA here in the US doesn't mean that they're bad sunscreen filters, but it's just because that they're relatively new to the market and because they don't yet have enough data. Because the Uvenol A and the Uvenol T were at such low concentrations, this raised a huge red flag for the founder and might I add cosmetic formulator Judith she ended up calculating some numbers for a possible estimate of what the SPF actually could be on this Purito sunscreen and it came back as an SPF of 10.3 This calculation is just an unofficial way to kind of determine what the possibility of the SPF could be. It's not like official at all, but I think it was low enough for her to really question this SPF. So she ended up taking a batch of this SPF with, by the way, an expiration date of 2023. I think that's really important to note because it's not like an expired batch or anything. Her and her team sent this batch to Europe to run three different lab tests. So this is where things get really interesting. The first test was performed in Poland with an in vitro test. This is where they test the sunscreen on little plates of tissue. It's typically outside of a living organism, so they're just on little plates of tissue and they kind of test it that way. This was their first option instead of the in vivo test because the in vitro test is a lot less expensive in vivo tests which we're going to talk about in just a second they're a lot more expensive because they do require 
human beings to be tested on instead of trays of tissues. So this in vitro test in this Polish lab came back as an SPF of 15.8. Um, 15.8. <laughs> so two more tests were done the in vivo way, which is the one that requires live human beings to be tested on. The second test, which was done in Poland, was performed with 10 people and the one in Germany was tested on five people. So the Polish lab came back as an SPF of 19 and the German lab came back as an SPF of 19.2. But do keep in mind that this is just one batch of this SPF and there is a possibility this one whole batch of SPF could have been faulty, but it's just to me unlikely that a whole batch that had an expiration date of 2023 could have been faulty. I'm not saying it's off the table because anything is possible and it is 2020 and I don't really think anything is impossible, but it's just like a whole batch of SPF being faulty doesn't sound right to me. So when this article was posted with links of the study and all the lab tests and all of that, all the information you would possibly need to know on INCI Decoder by Judith, the whole skincare world went crazy. The company received so much backlash on multiple different media platforms. A few days after this, Purito released a statement. This statement basically explains their side of things, kind of just like their word on it. They basically said that they asked one of the largest manufacturing companies in Korea who deals with so many huge major brands to formulate this SPF for them. So Nelkos is the manufacturer that Purito has been working with in creating this sunscreen. I don't know what else they formulated in the skincare line, but I know that they formulated the SPF. At least that's what they claim. Like I said, this is one of the largest manufacturers in Korea. Once the sunscreen formulation was finished, you have to get it checked by the FDA or in their case, the KFDA, and the KFDA gave it a, you know, okay, Purito said that the KFDA said that there's no problem with it, and they were sure that everything was fine. I'm guessing that just because they thought this manufacturer was so, so, you know, huge, dealing with so many large companies under their belt, like Amor Pacific, Innisfree, Tony Moly, Holika Holika, all these amazing brands, you know, it's kind of hard to not trust their word. As a consumer, I totally understand that. Like when you trust a brand or when people hype a product, a lot of people don't think twice to question the product and I totally understand that. Adding to the fact that the KFDA approved them and said that there was nothing wrong with the product, I see why they didn't feel the need to kind of triple check the product themselves, but they do have a responsibility as a brand to make sure that what they're selling is actually genuine. So now they're finally conducting their own research on the SPF and we're all just waiting to hear back from the brand on what the lab results basically say. So I'm gonna update you guys on the description box below and I'm probably going to mention it in a video sometime but we're all just waiting back from the brand to see what their test results say. In the meantime, they actually took down all their SPF from the website. They're kind of putting that in a pause until they know more. Bottom line is, we have no idea what really went down, but one of my biggest questions is, how come none of the parties who were involved in creating this SPF didn't think once to question the two really low concentrations of these filters like that no one questioned the filters at all or maybe they did and they kind of were just like whatever <laughs> but so many people on the internet picked that up so quickly and immediately questioned if this spf was genuine at all i just don't know what happened there so after all that went down a lot of people started to single out korean sunscreens but what a lot of us don't know is that this is actually not just a Korean sunscreen Korean issue, but this is a whole issue for so many places. One huge example is the is AMA Laboratories. This is a consumer product testing 
company. So this company basically certifies brands products, including sunscreens, yes. Their job is so important because they basically make sure that what the brand is gonna be selling is actually safe for us to use and that what the company actually claims is valid. In August 2019, the FDA released a full report of what went down with this lab. According to this report, according to the FDA, this laboratory has been faking results for 30 years. 30 years. <laughs> this led to the arrest of the owner of AMA Laboratories. 30 years, they've been <laughs> 30 years of faking lab results, 30 years. That's so insane. I mean, the Korean lab now coast that we talked about earlier isn't that innocent either. So the Korean manufacturer that we were talking about earlier that was working with Purito on the sunscreen, they've been placed on the FDA's import alert list. This basically means according to the FDA, they apparently don't conform to good manufacturing practices. To give you another example, on November 2019, an article was released by Radio New Zealand, which is a multi media organization. In this article, they stated that 9 out of 20 sunscreens failed their protection test. That means that they didn't pass the SPF claims or the protection claims of the product. One of the 9 sunscreens that failed is actually from the Cancer Society. The Cancer Society. So again, this is not just a Korean issue, but it is a worldwide issue. Sunscreen formulation alone is extremely tricky. It's a tricky process because it requires extensive testing. As I mentioned before, the in vivo test, it's not cheap. <laughs> it requires human beings to be tested on and burnt. <laughs> Trusting an SPF product right now, it can be tough because it seems like a major gamble, but Michelle from Lab Muffin Beauty Science here on YouTube, she made a great, great video of explaining how sunscreens are formulated and she really goes in depth about it. I think you should watch her video. I'm gonna have it linked down below. She made this really great analogy about sunscreens. Michelle said that unless you're testing every single sunscreen that you use on a panel of people, there is no way to really tell that the SPF that you choose meets the claims of the SPF on the bottle. Just like you can't guarantee that the airbags in your car will actually work. I just feel like in this situation, we kind of have to trust blindly, we kind of just have to trust that it's gonna work for you, which is kind of like an, an uncomfortable thought. She goes on to explain that despite all of this uncertainty, there are some ways to tell which sunscreens are more promising than others, like sunscreens that are generally thicker. This could be lotions or sticks, sunscreens from a country that regulates SPF as a drug, and from some brands that are large enough to attract attention of regulatory authorities. So I've included some SPF products from consumer reports that have apparently passed the SPF claims on the bottle. I'm gonna have them listed in the description box below, including the links of these consumer reports. So if you wanna take a look at that yourself, and if you don't know what consumer reports are, it's basically a nonprofit organization that's committed to unbiased testing. So what now? Uh, if you're feeling lost and you have no idea what to do with your Purito sunscreen, I have some options for you. So the first thing you can do is to use it. Even though it might not give you the protection that you're looking for, it's still really moisturizing. Um, you can use it on your face, your neck, the back of your hands, and you can always apply another SPF over it to maybe provide you some extra protection. According to the Skin Cancer Foundation, even an SPF of 15 can lower your risk of melanoma, which is a very common type of skin cancer, by 50% and still adding the benefits of protecting you from aging, wrinkles, dark spots, sagging, all of that stuff. Another option which is actually really great is that you can actually return it. Purito is offering people the opportunity to return their products, all of their SPFs, if you purchased it from the dates of June 1st and December 9th. If you have proof of purchase, even if it's opened and used. They do have all the information that you're gonna need on their Instagram's highlight story, highlight? 
highlight. Um, you can find it there. The instructions are there. They say to just contact the customer service that you purchased the product from. I actually purchased more of this sunscreen. I bought it from Salvana. I contacted the customer team and they actually gave me my money back. They didn't ask me to send it back, which is great. Less hassle for me. But I do feel you. I know that it's annoying for some people who don't meet the requirements of the return. But this actually does cover such a major group of people. I think it's really great because they're kind of showing you that they're taking some responsibility. I feel like a lot of people have a lot of trust issues at this moment, especially when it comes to their SPF, but this does not give you the excuse to not wear sun protection because it's still, still very, very necessary. <laughs> sun protection is a serious thing. SPF is still really, really important and can still bring down your risk for any skin damage. Aging and skin cancer is no joke. Regardless of all of the situation, please, please, please use your SPF. SPF is still important. Sunscreens still work. But anyway, sunscreen alone should not be your only way of protecting yourself from the sun. You can still protect yourself from really damaging UVA and UVB rays from things like using an umbrella. I was once walking around a park near me during the summertime and I was the only person carrying an umbrella during peak hours of the sun. And it just felt really, really weird for me, but that's something I've always done for a very long time. My mom actually makes fun of me for having like umbrellas near me at all times. I just don't really like direct sunlight. Here in America, I just feel like so out of place doing that. But when I used to live back in the Philippines, it's actually something that's pretty common. People walking around with umbrellas when it's really, really hot and sunny. Use an umbrella. I have like three umbrellas, one in my car, one in my bag, and one in my closet. I know a lot of people think umbrellas are just for rain. Umbrellas are not just for rain, guys. Umbrellas can be for the sun too. <laughs> also, you can always find shade. I mean, try to find shade when you're out or just stay away from the sunlight when it's peak hours of the day. I know staying indoors can suck sometimes, but you can just find shade, you know, outside if you wanna be outside. You can also wear some sun protective clothing, hats, shirts that have like some SPF protection on there. And also I have these gloves. I have no idea where they are. Otherwise I'd show you, but I, I don't, I think I lost them somewhere. I've had them for a while and I actually saw Dr. Dre have them too. And I was like, oh my God, I have that. Basically these protect your hands from direct sunlight when you're driving, especially people who do long drives. Your hands are the first to show aging, so you wanna protect it. They really helped with protecting my hands from the sun. I'm gonna have it linked down below. I know this news can be kind of upsetting for so many people, and I personally was kind of taken back when I first heard the news, but I also think this can be a positive thing where it can hopefully push the skincare community in a far better direction than when we first started. Hopefully putting companies under the microscope and giving them the opportunity to hopefully be more transparent and honest and also give companies the opportunity to grow deeper connections with their consumers. I really do think that this can give companies the opportunity to push for more trust and gain more trust. I never support cancel culture, I never did. It's not really a positive energy that I support. I think it's very toxic and negative and a very misunderstanding type of culture. I really like to understand as much as possible and not jump to conclusions. So I think if you want to participate, you can participate by holding brands accountable and for hopefully demanding for more transparency and authenticity. I hope that this video gave you more awareness and more knowledge on the situation and I hope that it didn't come off as anything negative. I just hope that you come out of this more well informed. If you haven't already, please be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on the post notification bell to be notified every single time I post a new video so you never miss out on any posts. <laughs> but yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!